Welcome to part one of chapter two. In this part, we'll talk about the so-called uh, system thinking or socio-technical approach to project management. Now, this is, uh, those are some uh, most fundamental premises of the so-called socio-technical approach of systems thinking. You see projects, be it IT projects or telecommunications projects or engineering projects, they are not carried out in vacuum. I mean, they are not carried out in isolation. They must operate in a broad organizational environment. So because of that, project managers need to use uh, system thinking, uh, which means taking a holistic view of their project so that uh, you worry, as a project manager, you worry uh, about the project itself, you know, all those technical aspects of the project, but also the context, the overall organizational context that surround your project. So you need to have this broad holistic perspective because sometimes those broad, soft, organizational people factors, they uh, mysteriously influence uh, your project and sometimes project fails without uh, project managers in charge of these projects even understanding why they fail, right? Uh, this is exactly what happened uh, in uh, at Natural Springs, right? Only uh, sometime after the project manager, the CFO, found out what was happening with his project and who was sabotaging his project and why the project ultimately failed. Now, uh, the system thinking approach emerged somewhere in 1950s in engineering. Uh, engineers, they started to notice that uh, uh, sometimes you design a perfect bridge from an engineering standpoint, you know, you have a solid design, but when, when you build a bridge, when you, when you build this bridge in real life, it falls down, right? Why does it fall down? Well, uh, it was designed perfectly. However, you know, people, the construction workers, or the manager of those construction workers, he decided to save some money and because of that he bought a low quality uh, concrete, right? Or, you know, the concrete was fine, but the workers who worked on this project, they were not disciplined enough, did not obey all the, all the procedures and technologies for pouring those, this concrete, right? So you see, this, this is something that has little to do with engineering, meaning how the, how the bridge was designed. It is something that has to do with people and, and the overall organization. Do you have appropriate training? Uh, do you tr did you train people? Uh, so that they know uh, and they understand all the procedures for pouring concrete. Do, uh, does your construction organization has an appropriate structure where, you know, construction workers, they listen and obey uh, orders from supervisors and so forth, right? So this is something that has little to do with engineering. Nevertheless, engineers have no choice but to take into consideration uh, those organizational factors as well if they want uh, their designs, uh, uh, their bridges, their, their uh, cars, you know, their houses, uh, to be durable, to be reliable, to last for a long time. So sometimes that human factor even incorporated in product design. For example, you know, some products can be designed in a way where they cannot harm humans so that, uh, you know, if somebody is not, uh, you know, careful enough, you know, he will not be hurt by that product. Because this is something that often uh, has little to do with, with the product itself. It, it's something that has to do with people and how they think about those products. But nevertheless, you need to take, into, uh, take this into account. So what is the system thinking imperative, meaning the most important advice in relation to IT project management? Well, uh, when you're working on an IT project, you, all, you need to address business, technological, and organizational issues before making changes to the system. Or, or in general, you need to keep in mind business, technological, and organizational aspects. So for example, uh, let's say you have a project in front of you, and the project involves equipping every student at a business school with a laptop. Uh, this is typically done as a part of e-learning initiatives where, uh, you know, uh, business schools or colleges of any kind or universities as a whole, uh, they are trying to offer most of their courses or most of their course content online. And the idea is that students will not need uh, uh, textbooks. They will come to class with a laptop and they will access all this information like video presentations, PowerPoint slides. They will uh, take quizzes online using their uh, laptops. They will take exams online and so forth. Now, a lot of uh, IT uh, specialists, they start here in the technological domain. So they address, uh, they think about technology issues first. Should the laptops use Macintosh, Windows, or both types of operating system? What kind of operating system are we gonna require? What application software will be loaded? You know, what kind of applications are needed to support e-learning? What will be the hardware specifications? And what is the minimum configuration that we need to have for our laptops? How will the hardware impact LAN and wireless internet access, right? So they think about technical considerations, but sometimes they overlook a number of important considerations that are on the business side. For example, what will the laptop project cost to the college? I mean, it could be that technology is fine, but it's just too expensive. 
what will it cost to students? I mean, students are already bombarded with all kinds of fees, with all kinds of, uh, you know, loans and tuition payments. So what if you ask them to buy a $2,000 laptop on the top of that? How will it will impact students? Will it cause a lot of students to drop out from the program or not, right? Or how will you, will you subsidize purchase of those laptops? So what will the support cost be? Because you cannot just tell students, oh, from now on we are having laptops. You need to offer some support in case they're struggling with your learning management system or let's say they, they do not know how to install Java so that their browser can uh, uh, launch a Blackboard Collaborate software and so forth. And, and ultimately, how will it impact enrollment? I mean, you're trying to differentiate your college, you're trying to, to be on the cutting edge of technology, but who knows, maybe it will not attract students, it will scare away certain students. So the issues on the business side uh, have to be taken into considerations as well. And, you know, uh, all those issues in the business side, they typically, um, you know, deal with uh, profit, right? Either with the cost side or revenue side of the profit equation. So it's largely about money. And then organizational side, will the laptop project affect all students, just traditional students, only certain majors? Should you start with, with this overall project for everybody, you will require everybody to have a laptop, or you will experiment, let's say, with only computer science department first? And how will the project affect students who already have PCs or laptops? I mean, what kind of deal are you offering to them? Because somebody will tell you, look, I don't want to buy a laptop, I already bought a PC for my studies here, right? Who will train students, faculty, and staff? I mean, will you have to hire additional staff members to train them how to use those laptops? how to use the learning management system, who will administer and support training, because this is something that will require additional lines, additional expenses, okay? So, so that's the essence of socio-technical approach. You look at the technology side, at the business side, at the organizational side, and organizational side also involves thinking about people, specific people. If you only focus on the technology area, then most likely you will fail. I mean, you can have brilliant ideas about, uh, uh, you know, the, the kind of laptop that you need, their configuration, their operating system, but, you know, those, those factors will, will, will put a stop to any kind of uh, uh, technological advance if they're not properly dealt with. So that's the essence of the so-called system thinking or socio-technical approach. You need to look at the technology side of a project, business side, and organizational side. So that completes part one.